Well then, Bunny, let's talk about books. You see, people always say, hey, Steve, why do you have so many kids in your house? To which I say, I apparently have a lot of sex for someone who never has sex. <laughs> Not that I'm bitter. People also say, hey, write what you know. And what I know is that I have been a loyal but scatterbrained employee at my local bookstore for over 17 years now. Yes. If my employment history were was a person, then it would be just now beginning to experiment with drugs. Yes. Uppers, downers, screamers, laughers, gassers, pink footballs, red gorillas, smoking bales of Big Chief. <laughs> and as such, I really do have my skeletal fingers on the pulse of the book world, and I am here to rub my skeleton fingers upon your torso with this week's incredibly unincredible installment of Notes from the Bookstore! Dun, dun, dun! Thank you. And this week's episode of Notes from the Bookstore is brought to you by the latest science fiction fantasy epic novel from legendary author Brandon Sanderson. His new novel, Oathbringer, the long-awaited third book in the beloved Stormlight, Darkness, Empire, Chronicles, Foundation, Ender, Odyssey, Dawn, Space, Midnight, Galactic, Dragon, Xeno, War, Universe, Saga, Amber, Robot, Wars, Black, Empire, Paladin, Elf, Night, Tower, World, Bastard, Law, Material, Saga, tr Cycle Trilogy. Yes. Very popular, I am told very popular series. I'm pretty sure that some of the words I just said are correct. <laughs> All I know is that the corporate offices said this new Brandon Sanderson book is going to sell like crazy, so we better send Steve about 50 or 60 or 70 copies of it. The only problem is it's a hardcover, and it's 1,000 200 pages long. Oh, lordy. This is freaking huge. I don't have room for 12 of these. <laughs> Let alone 60 copies. This guy apparently really decided to Stephen King it up. Yeah. Uh-huh. So it's a sword and sandal it. That's really fun for me. <laughs> well, Black Friday came and went, uh, although all Fridays matter. Yes. It was crazy, insane, busy, and people, people are douche waffles. Uh, yeah. People just suck. Oh, and, uh, and, uh, 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 uh it, we were we Natasha almost missed Supernatural on uh, Thanksgiving because she's like, okay, we we left Nana and Papa's house, minus Nana for for Thanksgiving, and now we've got time. That's good. I wanted to leave early so I had time to get ready for tonight's all new episode of Supernatural. I think we have time to go to the store and buy this thing. <laughs> we've got to buy this one thing. For like the, the, the laundry, for our new washing machine, we need to buy this tube to hook it up to the wall. And, and I'm pretty sure they have it at Walmart. Let's go to Walmart. And the whole time I'm just going, honey, it's Thanksgiving yeah. and you want to go to Walmart. It'll be fine. Are you sure? No, it'll be fine. Honey, are you positive? Yeah. I mean, how many people are going to be at Walmart at 5 p.m. on Thanksgiving? Honey. I I don't think you know how this works. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. We're, we're just going in and out. Oh, my God, buddy. <laughs> oh, my freaking God. Yeah. Well, apparently, Natasha didn't realize that uh, with Walmart, uh, Black Friday it sh starts on Thanksgiving at 6 p.m. <laughs> 
There were hundreds of people, like 70% of this small town were all at the Walmart. Oh, God. It was insane. The inside, it was crazy. And Maxwell like wanted to come in, and, and Natasha's like, oh, no, stay in the car. We won't be long. And the whole time, I'm just going, okay, if you think so. And, and we, when we finally got back, event, you know, eventually finally got back to the van, like Maxwell's still upset that he couldn't go in. And I'm like, no, seriously, Maxwell, we would have lost you. You yeah. would have been a Walmart child. <laughs> I was there. You would have been Maxwell Edward Walmart. <laughs> or maybe Maxwell Edward Mart, depending. I don't know what they do with their with their uh, orphan children. Yeah. That are orphaned Maxwell, inside Maxwell, of the Walmart. But Maxwell Edward. They, they sell Edward, them to a pizza shop, I heard. Probably, yeah. Yeah. So, so apparently, somehow... Because I'm too good of an employee, I spent the majority of Black Friday on the floor. Yeah, by choice? With the the regular people. Oh, you mean mean as a customer instead of a... No, 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 no. When, When Black Friday finally went around, I'm talking about work now. See... The best part, the absolute best part of, of being one of the last of the great receiving managers is that I have my own special cave in the store where I can hide during the holidays. Oh, wait, did I say hide? I really meant to say work hard and yada, 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 and definitely not hide. So on Tuesday, we got in well over 200, 200 plus boxes of stuff. Yeah. But thanks to my Thanks to my paranoia and crippling self-doubt mixed with my neon pea energy drink uh, uh, concoction, that meant that I ended up doing 90% of what I got on Tuesday. Okay. (laughs) Completely unaware that the corporate uh, head honchos were sending us a a ridiculous amount of stuff on Monday and Tuesday to then be done steadily throughout the week. Uh huh. What I'm saying is, I work too hard. Yes. Basically, I'm too good at my job. So by the time Black Friday rolled around, I had like 14 boxes. And I'm like, okay, I'm done with my boxes. And they're like, great, Steve, we could use you on the floor. That means that instead of being a receiving manager in the back, uh, uh, listening to my weird music and hiding from people, I actually had to help people on the floor. Like some sort of sap! Yeah. I'm so used to, I'm so used to being the receiving manager, I feel like, uh, Ray Liotta's character at the end of Goodfellas. <laughs> like I have to wait in line for my food, like some sort of sap! Uh huh. But yeah. So it, it, yeah, so Black Friday was crazy. But I like the holidays. I really do. And I'll tell you why. During the holidays, people are less racist to me. Oh, that's okay. I, I never thought I, there would be a swing in the holidays. No, no. People, pe- the, people subconsciously avoid me. And they and they they're literally just walking around the store like I can't find anybody who works here. And I go up to them and I go, "Hi, how are you doing?" And then they immediately they don't see me or they look around me, like the way that people in the Discworld series of books deal with the character of Death. Death comes up to them and talks to them and asks a favor, and then the person talks back, but they don't really see Death because you can't see Death. So their eyes just sort of edit around death. Uh Uh-huh. So the people that death talk to, unless they're dead, the people that talk to death are basically sort of talking to someone that they can see that they just can't see. Yeah. That's the best way to describe how white people see me at work. (laughs) To be fair, though, it's Uh all subconscious. So, like, so, like, uh, uh, Cheryl with five grandkids doesn't mean to be racist. It's just she's going into the store and she sees this weird-looking long-haired guy in jeans and a Thor t-shirt. Yeah. She doesn't expect this weird-looking long-haired Mexican guy to actually work here. I'm going to find someone who works here. 
Okay. To be to be fair, I would probably do the same thing. If I was at a store and I saw some long haired Mexican dude and then a a white sixty five year old named Randy, I would go to Randy. <laughs> okay. You know? So it, during I like the holidays because customers are so desperate and so worked up into a freaking frenzy that they're willing to overlook their subconscious latent racism. Yeah. Like if, if it were May, if it was August, they wouldn't bother asking the long haired minority a question, but it's almost Christmas and damn it. They need help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So people are less worried about asking me for help and I like that but that being said I'm still surprised by the amount of stubborn ass people who still held on to their prejudices you know so you Not are you are counting that as less racism yeah 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 they because acknowledge they you're alive <laughs> not all people magically become not racist just because it's like December so there were still some people like some old white people who were walking around going I can't find anyone who works here to help me excuse me Mexican I just can't find an employee <laughs> so I always had this sort of subconscious rule and you just brought it up like if you can't show me the absolute minimum sense of human decency if you can't treat me like a human being with thoughts and emotions who live on the planet Earth, I'm not going to treat you like a customer that needs my help. Oh, uh, good. Good. But, but, but I try, you know, because, like, I'm, I'm walking up to you, I'm, I'm holding a stack of books, I smile at you, I say hi, don't you dart your eyes away from me. Yeah. I work here. So it's like, okay, well, then I guess I won't, like, come up to you and ask you if you need help, because you're, the, I, I'm asking for the bare minimum. Yes. No? But I try not to live by that theory, because if, if I treated customers the way they treated me, then I would never help anyone. <laughs> So basically, Black Friday was fun. We actually had such a successful day. We had such a successful day that we were making more money in our little store than the big stores in Oklahoma City and Tulsa were making at the same time. Like my store manager kept running to the back room to check and see how we were doing. And like she would be there like, yeah, I, I'm not exactly sure why, but we're about five thousand dollars over the big store in tulsa nice we're 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 three thousand dollars over the two stores in oklahoma city and it's weird because they're bigger stores and stores with music departments and dvd sections and we're like the old weird store but no we were beating them we we're beating them like crazy but then saturday was like a typical Saturday for us and we were all surprised about that like why are we not super crazy massively busy right now and then we realized it was because of the game because oh. Norman is a college town and everyone the entire city of Norman revolves around a college football team and so more than likely the reason why our store was more successful on Black Friday and not that busy on Saturday was because everybody was getting out while they could before the game. That, that, that for a while was why I feared Thursdays. Yeah. Because Thursdays was a big football night. Yeah. And our company had the NFL network. Hmm. Who would not play the big games? Oh, God. Because they would make more money selling the game to another network. Yeah. So all night it would be pissed off football fans yelling at me with yeah. nothing to do about it. I would imagine. <laughs> yeah, that's that would suck. Yeah, so the, so the one positive in all of this is that apparently we're having such a good year, including already a really, really great Christmas is that 
when it comes to the matrix of how they decide uh, when seeing how well stores do, we actually might get bumped up a matrix or two because that's how successful we're doing. We can't afford to hire to keep to hire another me if I leave. Yeah. But we are like bumping up a like a like a grade or two as far as how big of a store we are. Because we're apparently doing great. Nice. Yeah. Nice. One last thing that I wanted to bring up on this week's notes from the bookstore is the trend, and I think I've talked about this before. The trend of turning things around. Okay. Magazines, books. There's a thing that people do. Usually, it's an angry old white person, but um, it's like a form of protest for them. Like yeah. if an old person is walking into the grocery store and they see a copy of a magazine and Obama's on the cover, they go, oh, well, we can't have that. And they'll get the magazine and they'll turn it around. Okay, I've done something similar, except for it wasn't with magazines. <clears throat> It was the pineapple upside down cake mix box. And I'd go down the aisle that, and I'd turn it upside down. That now that's cute. That's adorable, is what that is. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm talking about yeah. like you go into a bookstore and you see, oh, there's Hillary Clinton's book. Oh well screw that Hillary Clinton. I'm gonna turn the book around. Oh my God! Hillary Clinton dropped out of the president race because a woman named Cynthia turned a book around in a store. <laughs> <laughs> didn't we? When we went to Royal Gorge, didn't we turn on all the Star Wars toys? Oh, probably. Because I, I'll do that too. <laughs> when I used to go to Walmart, I don't go to Walmart Was that anymore. Christmas but... Day or something? Like that? Yeah. 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 Cold out there. Yeah. But um, <laughs> I, when I used to go to Walmart, yeah, I'd go down the aisle and just like hit every single one of those stinking toys with the music <laughs> button. Oh yeah, es especially Thanks. especially it was like in the middle of October. <laughs> yeah. No, but this is like a form of protest. Sometimes liberals do it with like a book about Trump. Yeah. With, like. Like a book with Trump on the cover, but primarily it's white people, it's Christians, it's conservatives, it's old, angry white people. It's a form of protest to them. Basically, this is their taking a knee. <laughs> <laughs> so you always have to keep an eye on stuff. If I'm walking by the biography section, I'm looking for um, Barack Obama's book about his dad. I'm looking for Hillary Clinton's biography, making sure that it's all turned around the right way, and yada, yada, yada. <laughs> So I'm always looking for magazines. Sometimes it's not something that they're upset about. It happens a lot, too, with, like, the, the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue. Okay. You know, some conservative woman, like, oh, I can't believe they have this built right here. I mean, kids can see it. I, and then they turn it around. Oh, that solves it. Yeah. Just fixed everything. <laughs> it's a good thing she showed up. Yeah, so on Black Friday, I come into the store, and the first thing I notice is that the big octagon that we have right there, the first thing you see when you enter the store is this big, huge octagon, and there's three big, huge, massive stacks of Hillary Clinton's new book, What Happened? And I'm like, oh, God. So you mean to tell me that angry white people are going to come into our store in Oklahoma and the first thing they see will be Hillary Clinton's book, What Happened? Okay, I'm going to keep an eye out for this octagon because <laughs> people are going to be pissed. Uh -huh. And then the worst part is, is that right below that, uh, someone also put big stacks of Joe Biden's new book. And I'm like, okay, now you're just screwing with people, you know? Yeah. So so all throughout the day, I keep going to the octagon to look, and no one's done anything. And then I look again like an hour later, no one's done anything. And I'm like, oh, maybe people are different. Yeah. Maybe people are nicer, and they've changed, and yada, yada, yada. And then after lunch, I go, and I check the octagon. And uh, 
yeah, so someone screwed with it, but but it, it backfired on them. I don't think they realized it, but it backfired on them. What they did is, number one, there are three big stacks. Eleanor, don't move my podcast. What the heck are you doing? Number one, they move, they 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 turn all of the the copies of Hillary Clinton's book around. Yeah. But then but then this person is like, oh no, I need to do more. So they look around the octagon looking for a conservative book, looking for a conservative book to cover up Hillary's book. Okay. Say, oh, I'm gonna uh, uh, screw that Hillary Clinton. She's a horrible person. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cover this. You can't, you can't get to that chair. Stop. No, you can't get that to that chair. You can't get to it. Stop ad. Stop trying to get to that chair. Eleanor, learn, learn. This is a time for you to grow as a person. You can't get to the chair. Thanks, everybody. This is a great podcast. <laughs> so the guys, so I'm assuming guy, the yeah. guy is looking around the octagon for another conservative book and oh, he finds a Trump book. Oh my God. So he's going to get the Trump book and cover the Hillary Clinton book with it. Okay. But here's what happened. Apparently, this dude didn't pay attention. And what he did is he covered the stack of Hillary Clinton's book with the new book, You Can't Spell America Without Me, written by Alec Baldwin as Donald Trump. Nice. <laughs> oh. He thought it was actually Donald Trump. Well, see, consider the source. Yeah. Yeah, oh, that that's, no, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Did you like, leave dude, it? No, 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 no. I, 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 I put it back. I put it back the way it was because I figured that would piss him off more. In fact, when I was in charge of the children's department, I, I would constantly be like, okay, let me straighten this biography section. And, uh, yeah, let me put a big face out of this Obama book, big face out of this Obama book, put a big face out of this Hillary Clinton book, put a big face out of this book about Bill Clinton. And, uh, yeah, just keep this book about Jesus spined. Now we <laughs> sit back and play the waiting game. <laughs> And it was so fun to, to to just literally be in the children's department and hear parents pissed off. <laughs> oh, what the hell? Who, who even did this? <laughs> oh, it was fun. It was fun. <laughs> and anyway, that is it for notes from the bookstore this week. And remember, boys and girls and the rest... You too can save 10% on all of your purchases, and all you have to do is keep Roy Moore away from our teen section. Yes. He's always lurking around the teen books. Oh, I see you also like Twilight. <laughs> are, you a, are you a teen Edward or a teen Jacob? <laughs> oh, you're creeping me out. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a judge. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm a judge. Oh, it's incredible! It's incredible. I, I, and he may still win. Like what the yeah. fuck? What the fuck? Yeah. What is what is just the fuck? The fuck? Just That's what right. is the fuck? Yeah, I don't know. Existence. It, it, being an American is really fucking depressing right now. Yeah. I mean, like... And, hmm. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. No, I was, I was, I was going to move on to the next uh, bit. Okay. Okay. 